This is Larry Hedrick for Mysteries of Superstition Mountains, where we bring the past into the present for our future viewers. Today we have another great story by Jack San Felice. Here we are out in the wilderness. It's actually pristine wilderness, off somewhere off of Route 60. Route 60 East, about 70 miles from Phoenix, Arizona. We're in this area, what was known as Ward's Cabin Site. When we went out there that day recently, there, wasn't, there really wasn't much and it's growing over. The overgrowth from the rain and the desert is growing over that particular area. And eventually that whole thing will be grown over and you'll never be able to see where the cabin was. So I thought this was a good time to record this story of that old cabin. I tried to find the history of it. Uh, Tom Collimore said that the cabin could have been born, built in the 1940s by a fellow by the name of Tacky, T-A-C-K-E, and he was one of the inhabitants. And there were other people that lived there or came and, and went, uh, including Bob Ward and uh, a lot of other prospectors from that time frame. Bob Ward was a mountain man, and he had hiked these mountains for 30 years in search of the Peralta treasure or the Peralta gold. Anyhow, Bob Ward's cabin was quite a deal, and, and if you use that as a base of operations, you could go to a lot of really interesting things in the Superstition Mountains. Bob Ward and uh, uh, several others lived at that cabin site from time to time, right here, right here. The road was very uh, well-traveled in and out in those days. Ward came to this area, actually, uh, after the Korean War, about 1960. He was employed by the Apache Sentinel as a writer, and he wrote about adventures in the Superstition Mountains. And there we are. We're in the foothills of the Superstition Mountains now, actually on the site where the cabin was. And uh, I have photos that can, I will show you later of exactly what the cabin looked like and what it looked like now. I have a comparison photo. Uh, all around this area were mining claims. The hill behind me was referred to as Hat hat mountain because coming in it looks like a hat some people thought it was the sombrero from the lost sombrero mine one of those one of those uh, legends that the gold was close to that particular rock formation there that hill called hat mountain it looks like a hat the, and from some perspective around here looked exactly like a hat or an old sombrero, but that was not to be. Bob Ward, as I said, he came out here and he lived here for about 10 years at that cabin. The cabin was well equipped to live here winter and summer. Not far from here, they had a, a bathtub outside bathtub and they had a well and they would pump water from the well and fill their bathtub and I guess the guys took a, a bath in here from time to time. Bob Ward was quite a character uh, and he surrounded himself with a lot of characters. These weren't ordinary people. They were treasure hunters. They were rough and tumble kind of guys and they wore long guns. Those guys were the six-gun, camel-smoking, hot-rod-driving, cowboy hat prospectors of the 60s and 70s. And uh, you know what I mean. If it, you, you can just envision those guys. And you go in Bob Ward's cabin, so I went in there. It was a story about people now. I also did my research and found out off Peralta Road in that area, there were several people killed uh, from the 70s through the 90s. And um, you, you have to believe that some of the characters that hung around Ward's cabin were responsible for some of those shootings. Um, there was one of the characters that I found 
that that stayed at Bob Ward's cabin besides Bob Ward, and his name was 45 Bob. Well, 45 Bob name comes from the fact that he carried a 45 Colt revolver. He uh, liked to shoot up the, the inside of the uh, cabin. He liked to shoot the trees and the saguaros. And if you ever were there and saw walked around and looked closely at the, some of those saguaros, they have a lot of bullet holes in them. 45 Bob had to be absent from the cabin for some time. And he left a note. And it said, leave my things as they are. I will be back, 45 Bob. Now, 45 Bob was kind of an intimidating type person. Well, in 2000, the year 2000, the BLM came, and not long after he wrote that note, they tore the cabin down. And uh, that note was gone. I can imagine the look on 45 Bob, probably when he got out of jail, he came back looking for his stuff in the cabin, and the cabin, the whole damn cabin was gone. What a look on his face. I'd like to have been there to see that. It was totally demolished. You don't see anything left of it. A few boulders for the foundation, a few rocks that's here. You would never know that this was one time a thriving prospector's camp, a thriving treasure hunter's camp, where treasure stories were told, where guys pulled their guns and shot whenever they felt like it. There were mining claims all over this area and from here further on into the superstitions. It was quite a day, those, uh, quite a time, I guess, uh, of the gathering place here at Bob Ward's cabin. I was here when the cabin was still a functioning cabin when I first came out to this area. And uh, not long, not far from this area, there were other mining cabins set up shacks, so to speak, where prospectors had filed mining claims and uh, they didn't get along. You know, where one person thinks they found gold and is hiding it from another, even though they're partners, there's usually dastardly results from that. And that happened. It happened right in this area. There were mining shafts out here, shafts that went into the ground, and then there were other, other dig, dig holes not far from here, one that goes stair steps down into the ground. And it was like a trench mine, but a stair step down into it, and then it went down and dropped and dropped further levels where they thought the precious metals could be found, gold, mercury, silver, copper, who knows what. They think those metals were here. The legends were surrounding this particular area were that the Peraltas camped not far from here. When they came up here in the 1840s and went into the Superstition Mountains proper and brought out mule load after mule load or burr load of gold ore rich gold ore, and then from there they made their way back into Mexico. That would have been in the 1840s. That's legend, that's myth. We don't know that that actually occurred. There are some indications it may have occurred. But the area we're in right now, it's hard to describe to you just being here uh, when the cabin was here because it was a shelter from the weather from the heat, from the cold, from the rain. And it was a place, there was a, the road in was always good. You could drive right in and park right back down there or park right over here. Up on this little hillside right here, the people that had been here, several of the prospectors or people that came to the cabin, they had their old boots put in cement, and their names were then either engraved or painted on the cement blocks. And they were right, behind, right over there. There were about a dozen of them. And when they tore the cabin down, uh, 
Someone gathered those up and donated them to a museum. They were the legendary people who searched for the lost Dutchman mines, the lost Peralta mines, gold, treasure from the Jesuits. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.